Hey there, and welcome to this demo of Cloudberry Managed Backup for Office 365. Now, as you may know, Office 365 is an ever-growing platform for business users across the globe. In fact, Microsoft recently announced that it has more than 60 million users worldwide. And on top of that, it adds around 50,000 small business users each and every month. So if you're an MSP, Office 365 Backup is a great way to expand your offering and make more money for yourself. Cloudberry Managed Backup for Office 365 is built and designed for the cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup of Exchange Online, Contacts, Calendars, SharePoint, and OneDrive. So, let's take a look. The first step to Office 365 Backup is adding a storage account. Now, to do this, you'll need to start by going over to the Storage Accounts section over on the left-hand side. There, you'll simply click Add Account and select the storage provider of your choice. That said, we currently support Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform for Office 365 Backup. There is the possibility, however, to use S3 compatible storage. For example, you could back up to Wasabi by adding it as an S3 compatible storage in the storage accounts section. The next step is to go over to the G Suite Office 365 section. Here we can create a unique URL which we can use to access the user portal. Now there's two ways to create a URL. The first way is to use the domain name we provided here at Cloudberry Lab. If you choose this first option, then you'll just need to add an alias to make your URL unique. The second way is to use your own domain name by creating a, a record and pointing your domain name to the IP address listed right here. From there, we'll proceed over to this mail domains to backup section. And the first thing we need to do here is add the backup destination from the list of storage accounts we've already added in the storage account section. Here, we can specify the storage account and bucket. Once we've done that, we just need to add the domains we intend to back up. We'll come down here and click Add Domain Slash User. We'll simply type in the domain name, select the storage account we want to work with, and we'll finally wrap things up by choosing the license mode. Here we have two choices, auto and manual. Auto means licenses will be granted and activated automatically to all the users that are turned on and enabled in the user portal. Manual, in contrast, allows you to specify how many licenses are available and granted to the domain's administrator. Speaking of licenses, we have a table right here that breaks down our license count. You'll also notice we can purchase licenses through this page. And in terms of pricing, Google Apps and Office 365 licenses are sold on a volume discount basis, meaning the more licenses you purchase, the better price you get per license. Beyond that, you can do some other cool things. For example, we can go over to settings and then to online access. And what we can do here is plug in our company's logo to the user portal so that our end users see our logo, our brand, and can associate the user portal with our company. Once we've done everything in terms of the initial setup, we can move on to more important things, namely backing up what we need to back up. So we'll use the URL that we created earlier in the general section. Once we've gone to that URL, then we have the option of choosing Google Apps or our Office 365 to log into. We'll click Office 365 for now. That will bring us to the page where we need to select between personal and business. We'll simply sign in, but if you're doing this for the first time, you'll need to use the credentials of an administrator with global access. There will be two permission pages that follow. You'll just grant permissions, allowing us to access and perform backups. First thing we see as we log in is the dashboard. You'll notice there are three windows. The first window is in regards to our backups. You'll notice we have the ability to backup mailboxes, OneDrive, contacts, calendars, as well as SharePoint. By clicking configure backup, we can go ahead and enable or disable that backup of one or more of these options. For example, if we disable SharePoint, it won't be included in the backup. The protection status reflects the level of protection of all users across your domain. To improve the protection status, we simply need to enable all the backups for all the domain users and provide alternative emails for domain users to access their accounts in the case that a password is lost or forgotten. The third window gives a broad look of our backups. It shows us the backup statistics associated with our domain and basically breaks down what's being backed up. If we move on to the users page, we'll find a list of all the users associated with our domain. Along with the users, we can also see shared mailboxes. What's more important, the users section essentially serves as a control panel. We can enable and disable licenses by turning this on and off. 
We can even go more specific and enable services to be backed up. What's even better is that we can perform this as a group action if we're looking to save a little time. We'll just select the users we want to group manage, click this blue actions button at the top, and then select configure backup. That said, I need to mention this column on the far right for licenses. It might be a bit confusing, but essentially this column informs us which users have a license from Office 365. Without a license from Office 365, we can only back up Exchange Online. If you want to back up everything else, you'll need to go into your Office 365 account and apply a license. Anyways, when we enable a user for the first time, that user will go ahead and get a two-week free trial. That means everything is fully functional for that user for two weeks. The next important aspect of this section is role-based access control. So when it comes to Office 365, there are two access roles we reflect with our solution. The first is administrators with global admin role. These administrators can access backups, enable disable backups, and also access the roles or access the backups of other users. The second role is the user management role. Users with this role can access the list of domain users, manage backups, but the main difference is that users with this role cannot actually access the backups of other users. On top of that, there are two types of permissions for non-admin users. By default, such users cannot sign into the user portal and cannot independently restore their data. In order to grant them permissions to do so, we can click this lock icon and grant permission to sign in and restore. Next, we set an alternative email address for a domain user by clicking on this key icon. Now, you don't necessarily have to set the alternative email address for with an Office 365 associated email. In this respect, you can use absolutely any alternative email address. Just set the email, create a password, and after that, you'll, you'll receive a confirmation email to that address. You just need to confirm that email, and then your user can use this email address to sign in without their Office 365 account. You can also, if you want to, use two-step verification. If you created an uh, alternative email, then you can delete backups here straight from the user's list. Now let's talk about retention policy. By default, the retention policy here is set so as to never delete any user's data. There are no limitations for versioning. In fact, the default retention policy keeps all versions. If you would like to customize your retention policy, then this is something you can certainly do. In order to create a custom retention policy for either a user or a group of users, we'll need to click on this cloud icon. From there, click on Create Retention Policy, and after that, click on Retention Policy one more time, and we'll then have the ability to set a specific retention policy for all of the services. We'll give the policy a name, select the service, and then we'll specify the type of data we want to be in the cloud storage. For example, if we type in 100 right here, the backup will delete files or emails that are older than 100 days. We can make that more specific and by specifying whether we want that 100 day count to start from the last modification or the date of the initial backup. The last component of setting this retention policy is the purge delay. Basically, this field specifies your retention policy moving forward. If I, for example, type in 10, this means the purging of those emails we just spoke about will be delayed for 10 days. If we were to select a service like OneDrive, then we'll actually get a couple more options for our retention policy. Case in point, we have the ability to check this box and keep the last revision no matter what. Or we can click this option and specify how many versions to keep. Once we've done that, we need to go back to the user's page. There we'll sign the retention policies we just created by checking the box and select those policies within the scroll down options. And just so you know, we can streamline this by selecting a number of users at once and apply the retention policy in the same way. Now this is the user's page in a nutshell. Just one last thing to mention. The console syncs with Office 365 twice a day. If you added a new domain user and the user is not showing up, then you can click this actions button again and sync the domain right away. We can also export domain users to a CSV file if need be. The next page to check out is the history page. Here we can see data graphics for the whole domain. If you want to inquire about a specific user, you can just search that user at the top and you'll get a breakdown of that user's data. 
Now let's see how we can manage particular users' data across Office 365's range of services. First, we need to go to the user list once more. And if we click on a particular user, we can then move on to Mel, where we'll be able to see all of emails we've backed up, including their content. If you want to make your backup more narrow or more targeted, then you can click backup options, enable a filter in terms of to, from, the date, we can even filter the backup by folders, choosing which folders to include or exclude. From there, if we go back and go to archive options, we'll get the same set of options, but the difference is that the archive options will dictate what is kept in Office 365. We're essentially choosing which files to delete from Office 365 and store in your cloud, whereas the backup options simply creates copies and syncs those emails to your cloud storage. If we go back again, you'll notice we also have the option to run a backup right away. By default, backups run four times a day, every six hours. But if you want to run a backup at any time, there's nothing stopping you from coming here and clicking this option. We can likewise run a restore at any time. We can restore the whole mailbox, a selected folder, selected messages, and moreover, we can restore to specific locations. Now to do that, you'll have to use the search bar to select the folders or messages you would like to restore and then you can proceed forward and restore those folders or messages to another account by logging into that account. So now that we've explored Mel, let's check out OneDrive for this particular user. So by default, we're backing up all the files and folders per each user. On the left hand side is the list of folders and there we can navigate through and find individual files. If I click on say this folder, the files within it will appear. There are two ways we can restore files. First, we can restore the latest version available in the cloud storage. All we need to do is select a couple files or folders and click restore here at the top. Then decide whether to restore to the original location or restore the files and folders to a newly created restore folder. The second option is to restore a particular version. To do this, we just need to click on a particular file on the right hand side, we'll see the versions available for this file we want. We choose the version we want and by clicking on it, we can download that version to our local workstation. Next is contacts page. Here is where we can back up contacts. We can sift through our contacts groups, search for specific contacts, and what's more important is we can find specific contacts down to the version and we can restore all contacts or restore the contacts we've already selected. And that's pretty much it in terms of contacts. If we move on to calendars, it's equally straightforward. So on the left hand side, we can see our list of calendars. What we can do is restore all calendars or we can check a specific calendar and have the calendar restored. If we need to go further and restore a specific event, we just search that event within the calendar we checkboxed. From there, we can restore it down to the version we need. Last but not least, we can manage our SharePoint backups. By default, we back up all site collections in Office 365 groups, and this happens automatically. No need to provide any additional technical details, or our solution takes care of it. And so you can see, all the sites in Office 365 groups are listed on the left. Backing up and restore SharePoint Online data works absolutely the same way as OneDrive. We just open up the document library we want to restore from. That will allow us to see all the documents in that library, and just like OneDrive, we can restore selected files and folders, we can restore them to original location, or restore them to a specific folder, and lastly, of course, we can restore them by versions. So that's it for this demo of CloudBerry Manage Backup for Office 365. If you still have any questions, need some additional information, feel free to drop us a line at sales at cloudberrylab.com. We'll be happy to chat with you, happy to take any of your questions, and until next time, have a good day.